All right, so we're on. Uh, we're on with John Chico, and uh, John uh, was uh, at the Cloud Computing Issues and Strategies Conference uh, from October 5th with the Wall Street Technology Association, um, which we, quite frankly, have to thank uh, for their inclusion here. Hey, John, why don't you just give us a little background on what happened on October 5th? So, uh, yeah, on October 5th, uh, the Wall Street Technology Association hosted a, uh, a educational seminar in Boston. Uh, the Boston Financial District is uh, definitely a new avenue for them, and uh, it, it, it worked out really well. There was a lot of uh, participation, but it was basically on uh, how to securely leverage cloud computing. Now, uh, what is cloud? Can we, I mean, yep. let's just get right into let's, it. Let's um, get right into it. Uh, <laughs> You, you know, know every, everybody sees a different cloud, right? I, so you know, so what of, is it? One of the things I hate is buzzwords. And because buzzwords are used to get you a budgetary <laughs> money, it's used to, it's used to uh, be the fallback when something doesn't work. The spin doctors. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, this whole idea of cloud is, is just kind of nebulous, not to use a pun. But, um, but NIST does have a formal definition of what they think cloud computing is. And okay. they say, uh, I'm just going to read it off, cloud computing is a model for enabling convenient on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources, which are network servers, storage applications and services, mm -hmm. that can rapi be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service pride provider interaction. Now, that's a lot to take in. Uh, yeah, it certainly is when they say minimal management effort. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, and also it's a very technical term. Um, you know, NIST is, you know, a, a, a great set of guidelines. I, I use it all the time in, in my consulting. Um, but uh, a definition like this uh, means nothing to uh, the executive layer of management. Uh, right. It means nothing to the business operations. Um, I mean, Gartner has their own uh, their own definition, and uh, I'll read that uh, as yeah, sure. well. Uh, cloud computing is a style of computing where scalable and elastic IT-related capabilities are provided as a service to customers. A uh, little more manageable or, or, or uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. understandable. No, it's, yeah, um, it certainly is. It's, it's more business-related, so it can relate to a lot of different people out there. Yeah. But uh, in essence, you know, the cloud means different things to different people, and you know, some, they're all correct. Uh, there's there's no bad term for uh, for what a cloud is, um, but it's important to denote uh, the three major segments of cloud consumers, and okay. uh, that's uh, IT, business operations, and uh, the end user. So, go ahead. I'm kind of glad you went into that because business operations, is, it's critical for the business operations to understand what's going on. Uh, and conversely, it's the same for the IT operations to be able to, you know, lend an ear to the business operations. So both of them, both of those components are absolutely critical out there. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, what's paying the bills are, are the customers, the end users. Absolutely. So tying all three of those in are just, uh, you know, it bleeds into a lot of different conversations we have here at InfraGuard. You know, uh, everybody wants to make sure that the information technology people are all spun up on all the issues. Well, we heard from one company that said they were thinking of taking a whole bunch of their MBAs, all right, uh, <laughs> new new high-level employees, and sticking them in the inf information technology uh, part of the business for about a month, all right? And then, you know, having them switch spots with the business unit managers so they actually understood what the needs were. All right, and sure. so they just weren't building it for building's sake. They were building it because there was a business need. Oh, absolutely, and and uh, you know, I'm going to try. The whole idea of this, uh, these four segments, is to try and uh, look at it from a business standpoint, not sure. from a technical standpoint. Well, obviously, when we get to security, it will be more technical. Sure. Um, but again, just to, to go through, uh, you know, IT. We we went through the NIST uh, definition, and it talks about the all the various technical aspects. Um, so cloud includes some technical uh, aspects such as virtualization, managed provisioning, uh, shared resources, and uh, offloading of your work workload. Um, you tell that to a business manager, no clue. Right. So from from a business operations, what do they want to know? They want to know: Are they going to be more efficient? Uh, is their workflow going to be better? Um, are they going to get a faster time to market with products that they want to push out? Uh, are they going to have cheaper startup costs for the processes that they want to, uh, the new processes? Uh, will the cloud allow them more innovation? Uh, 
big thing is mobile apps, right? Uh, so mobile apps are, 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 you know, the cloud helps with that. And uh, of course, from the business standpoint, uh, where are these costs coming from? So moving capital costs over to operational costs uh, from a business standpoint is usually a, a good a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, and of course, now we get past the business operations, we're talking about the, cons- the end user. And by end user, I don't mean you know, me and you using our computer every day. I'm talking no, about. No, it, it could be their business partners, clients. Yes. It, it could be other companies uh, that maybe. Your sales force, your, yeah, you know, sure. your CRM. Um, so, what does it mean to them? Well, the cloud doesn't mean anything. The cloud really uh, is basically uh, the automation of their, uh, an abstraction of their business processes, their workflow that they do every day. What's going to be done automatically for me are the things that I'll, can I take. The big thing with, uh, with end users is the less steps to do their work the better oh yeah because if you can if you have somebody out there with a with an android or an iphone or an ipad or something like that and he's processing orders or processing questions with a client or something like that it's it's you know it gets back to the timely and accurate information if you can get that information back timely and accurate well you can set settle a customer who may be somewhat restless sure absolutely all right which means customer retention and a lot of other things um my biggest fear is that uh the cloud is just like uh you know when uh pcs and workstations came on the market where you know you called customer service and they say you say where's my order and they say well it's lost in the computer well now they're going to be saying it's lost in the cloud right me you know it's it's uh it's uh you know I, i i hope it doesn't get to that point but you know well, hopefully, if they if this is well architected and you know uh, people are really putting their nose to the grindstone here to make sure that this is laid out, there's a framework. Hopefully, that will not happen. Yeah, and uh, you know, and that's that's the whole idea. I mean, uh, traditionally, um, there are there were three um, types of cloud, and again, t- from a technical standpoint. Uh, they talked about infrastructure as a service, which was uh, instead of buying your servers and having IT put stuff on servers, sure. you were basically uh, outsourcing that. Um, uh, the platform as a service where it was that next uh, layer up, which was basically, uh, do I need to buy Windows servers? Do I need to have the Windows SharePoint? Well, or can I just rent SharePoint yeah, for the right. day? Right. Um, and then finally, the software service, which uh, if, uh, all, all the business folks out there know uh, Salesforce.com, right. which... Uh, you know, uh, your data is now really on top of their service. So uh, <laughs> there's some security issues with that as well. But, uh, you know, that's, those, those are the three traditional models. Um, but uh, ideally, the cloud offers a lot more. And, uh, I, you know, again, to David Curley Gartner, he identified uh, two major areas, and I, and I, I believe this wholeheartedly. One is um, business processes uh, as a service. And that's basically... Uh, doing um, workflow optimization uh, or having an outside uh, source look at your uh, order flow for all your orders and and being able to um, identify places it can be optimized. A good analogy for that is uh, the UPS uh, when they load their trucks. They have some complex software to determine size of the packaging and the delivery route. Right. Right. And so you you think of something as your business processes in that form and that's what business processes on the cloud would look like. Um, the other big area, and I thought this was great, was uh, information services. Now today we have uh, RSS feeds, oh, we have all kinds of data huge. feeds, but now the cloud allows you to take disparate information or information from sources that are maybe outside your company right. and aggregate it with sources inside your company and have some better decision making. Uh, I guess you know if you look at the way Google tracks searches and aggregates their advertising uh, streams towards the searches uh, is, is a good example of that. Well, I guess Google, Yahoo, uh, to a certain extent, Microsoft, uh, you know, all of them are kind of moving towards that, uh, you know, infrastructure platform, software as a service, you know, as we go down the road. They're all seeing, uh, I think, the cost benefit of it. You know, you can, you can today, uh, if you can't afford Microsoft's uh, Microsoft Office Professional Suite, you could certainly go up on the web and use it this minute. Yep, and Microsoft cost, Office Live, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it won't cost you a dime. Of course. Now, the correlate to that is that now everything you put, uh, if you use the Google Docs or the Microsoft Live Office, right. they're tracking what you're doing, not maliciously, but they're tracking what you're doing to try and gear their advertisers to more, you know. Uh, well, and, and that, <laughs> you know, you hit a key word there, advertisers. Everybody is gearing towards the advertisers. Because at the end of the day, 
you know, whether they're putting cookies on your machine or whether they're just collecting data as you're cycling through it, all right, uh, you know, it, it's happening out there, and it's eyeballs, all right, uh, you know, we do the same thing here on IGTV, you know, we, we try and, you know, account for how many eyeballs see, you know, what we do sure. is on demand as well as what we do in, in other areas. So let's take that to the next step now. Now that we're not talking about that, if you take the advertisers out of the equation as a business, as a, uh, you know, as a um, Accenture or, or some other large enterprise, um, how can we use that same data and do some data mining to gear our processes to be more efficient? Yeah. All right. So, so anyway. um, we're going to have more from John um, right after uh, we come back.